For maximum picture quality, it may be necessary to adjust the tracking control on your VCR. The central United States is the tornado's playground. Meteorologists come from all over the world because this is where they happen. From Texas all the way up to Nebraska and into Canada is what's known as Tornado Alley. And usually starting in early April through the summer is what they call the storm season. year storm that's coming. We were in the hottest tornado spot in the world at the hottest tornado time, and it was scary. I want your audience to feel the same amazement as what the storm chases feel. Get us out, get us out of here. Okay, bring the window. Here we go. Okay. In the summer of 1995, during the heat of storm season, the director of Speed, Jan de Bant, along with producers Kathleen Kennedy, Michael Crichton, and Ian Bryce, set out to capture the dark side of nature on film. The result is Twister, the latest film from Steven Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment. It tells the story of two recently separated meteorologists, played by Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton who were brought together again by the threat of the 50-year storm, a deadly system that threatens to drop multiple tornadoes into central Oklahoma. The NSSL says the cap is breaking. Towers are going up 30 miles off the dry line. All right, let's go. I'm playing this woman who's, while everyone else is scared and running away from a storm, she wants to, like, see inside of it and go toward it, and fear is just not in her, in her vocabulary. For these storm chasers, it's the chance of a lifetime, an opportunity to launch a tracking device nicknamed Dorothy that can unlock the secrets inside nature's most mysterious killer. We put her up inside a tornado. She opens and releases hundreds of these sensors that measure all parts of the tornado simultaneously. I'm a guy who walked away from it. I'm a gunfighter who left the gunfight. When I go back to see my ex-wife, Helen Hunt, to get the divorce paper signed, I've got my fiance in tow. I realize that since I've seen her, she's become even more obsessed. Did you sign papers? She didn't? Come on, you can still catch him. sort of hold them ransom if he goes on this one final chase with me. Dusty, the battle zone should be northeast of 81. Got Wait a minute. Go. The battle zone? Billy, what are we doing? We're going again. It's very fun to get to play a relationship that's already fueled by a lot of rage and love and a mixed bag of emotion. OK, guys, let's go get it. Add to this mix a rival storm chasing team headed by Carrie Elways dead set on getting to the twister first, and you have the makings of an incredible, terrifying ride. It's that cat and mouse chase with the weather, with this great ominous thing that these storm chasers deal with, and that's where the rush comes from. People tend to say that Speed was a very fast-moving picture. I think this one is a little quicker. <laughs> Traveling hundreds of miles throughout Tornado Alley, the line between the script, written by Michael Crichton and Anne-Marie Martin, and reality, began to blur. The production found itself surrounded by the same violent weather they were portraying on screen. We could see on our portable Doppler that we had a supercell moving toward us. And in fact, not only was it moving toward us, it was literally bearing right down on us. It's exhilarating because what's happening around you is completely and totally beyond your control. The night before we started shooting, there was an awesome thunderstorm, thunder and lightning storm. And as an actor, you always hope that there'll be some omen that you were born to play the part or that you're, you know, perfectly suited. The night before this movie started, I was lying in my bed going, if there were a tornado coming, I would run the other way. Lightning came out. And man, it was the loudest storm, and it was really powerful. 
the idea of people going out there chasing tornadoes tells you a lot about a person. On the very same day the Twister cast and crew hit the road, their real-life counterparts, the storm chasers from Vortex, had their sights set on the real thing. An offshoot of the National Severe Storm Lab, the team of scientists was tracking a massive storm system that had formed over the Texas Panhandle, just south of the production. The mission today is to uh, document the near-tornado thermodynamic fields. Using a caravan of 20 vehicles, two airplanes and a command vehicle manned by the team leader, Eric Rasmussen, the Vortex team was able to pinpoint the tornado's touchdown, a terrifying place where in the middle of the day, it looks like night. Uh, uh, it's still too dangerous for us to get out. There's an adrenaline rush to doing all this. You know, some guys like to go and, and, and surf the bonsai pipeline. Some guys are into hang gliders. These guys are into chasing tornadoes. And it's almost like chasing a rogue murderer. It's one of the most terrifying sights a human being can witness. Almost 345 degrees. The tornado we saw Friday was so strong that it peeled the asphalt off of a, of a highway and threw it 600 feet out through a field. Chris, that telemetry, we need emergency crews here. Uh, houses have been hit over. Oh, get, us out, get us out of here. I'm I know. Not only have the storm chasers of Tornado Alley begun to unravel the physics behind the violent storms, through the increased use of video cameras, they have also captured some of the most terrifying images ever seen. It was this kind of urgency combined with the excitement of discovery that Jan de Bont wanted to capture in Twister. The production became its own storm chasing unit, ready on a moment's notice to move if the weather was right, or in this case, wrong. I wanted to have this feel, feel of a, almost like a documentary that like those guys are really doing. They had this one day, and in this day, they had to get there. And it gives it a very unique look to the movie. We're driving due east on the country road. We've been on for about six miles. we got an F-32 sitting on the ground. Woohoo! I always feel that beauty gets in the way of the content. And I want to forget the beauty. I want to just go right to the heart of the story. We're getting slammed in here, guys. You better hang back. Time for deployment, guys. Let's do it. Sometimes when I didn't know what to do with this character, I decided I was playing young. Just, just focused and fearless. To recreate the violence of winds that can reach 300 miles an hour, DeBont again went for realism. Bring the wind up. Using the jet engine from a 707, massive fans, and even a turning rig that allowed Bill and Helen to be swept up by the force of the tornado. I knew reading the script it wasn't going to be, you know, like a easy picnic of a shoot. Here we go. Scenes when Helen and Bill drive straight into the storm, DeBont rigged up a caravan of semi trucks spewing debris and ice chunks over the camera car and onto the actor's truck. Just before the tornado happens, there's others use hailstorm. Besides that, I have to have a real hailstorm scene in the movie. I wish I'd never thought about it. We couldn't get any hail in, in all of Oklahoma, so we had to import it from a neighboring state. We had like four or five 40 foot trailers moving at the same time. 10 seconds later, all the ice is gone, all the debris is gone, and we have to go back to one. It took forever to shoot that scene. Stand by to roll. All right, guys, everybody knows this truck's going to be barely running through here, so nobody should be close to the side of the road. Let's pull out, everybody, please. Everybody pull out. Ice out. Right, there we are. Everybody stay right there. Let's get this thing going. Everybody stay right there. Let's get this thing going. This is pretty real. I don't have to do a lot of acting in, in this movie. You know, they're raining basically chipped ice on me. They're throwing debris. I mean, although it's it's lightweight stuff, it still hits, it still hurts. It's exciting stuff. This is why I signed up. It's a very physical role. Okay, she's almost ready. Hold on. We're almost there. We're almost there. Cut, 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 cut. It really looks like the end of the world. They built a set using existing buildings and buildings they built 
for the establishing shot and then they tore down. I'd say it was seven square blocks and they just reduced this place to rubble and they had got literally cars and trees and they um, copied a lot of famous tornado photographs. For blocks and blocks and blocks, we were walking through rubble up to our knees. It was just really bizarre. We need some hanging wires, electric power lines that can spark so that when we look this way behind them, there's a shower of sparks behind them. They had no warning. Even just to create very, very small scenes took a phenomenal amount of manpower and equipment. And it really made all of us step back and realize how nature itself can create this on such a massive scale. And we were putting all our energy into just creating what would exist in the frame. This is Topeka, Kansas. And this is the aftermath of the most destructive tornado ever to strike the state capitol. It sliced a path of death and damage a half mile wide and 15 miles long. Tree just blew over. The nature of the tornado and the reason it is able to destroy so much so quickly is that it is completely unpredictable, able to turn on the observer in the blink of an eye. It was this unpredictability that led DeBont to Industrial Light and Magic, the computer effects facility owned by George Lucas. It was a rare chance to control the uncontrollable. It should be a lot lower. I wanted to make it be as realistic as possible. We have so many tapes of real tornadoes, but always, again, seen from a distance. You never see the inside of a tornado, which we hopefully gonna see for the first time in this movie. It's kind of really a new wave in terms of saying we can do everything in the computer because all the cars that are flying, all the houses, you know, the, the spinning house onto the road and, and all the tanker and everything, that's all computer graphics. Are you going to make this then? The quality of computer imaging and the CGI is so incredible right now that you almost have to um, make it look like there are little mistakes in it. It's too perfect almost. We add the level of shake to it so that it builds up. The closer the tornado comes, the more intense that shake becomes. <laughs> I think it's in the eye of the beholder, you know, whether it's a monster that's coming to get you or a force of nature to be listened to or something fascinating or something terrifying. I think what makes it a good thing to make a movie about is it's all of those things. If they just get 10% of that feeling, then you still will be enormous, it will be still fantastic. <laughs> We as, as, as a society, uh, people just in general have an innate fascination with these storms, these, these tornadoes are just so captivating to look at. And here we're throwing the audience right into the middle of them and uh, it's going to be a hell of a ride.